in tonight. Pac-12 at SEC, number five, Washington, and number 22, LSU, both coming off of wins already today at the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson. Another gorgeous night in the Bay Area as we get set for this top 25 tussle. Washington coming in undefeated on the season. An impressive win already today over Tennessee. And just a, a few moments ago, LSU able to get the run rule win over Oklahoma State. As we welcome you back up into the press box, Beth Moans, Michelle Smith, Amanda Scarborough. Should be a dandy. We get a chance to see a couple of teams that should be competing for spots at the World Series this year. Yeah, I think that this is just a stacked lineup that we have today, <laughs> tomorrow. But LSU looked really strong last game. They struggled last weekend. So if they could carry the momentum that they got last game and to this game it'll be a good one and it is always about momentum it's about getting some of your younger athletes pressure situations and no better tournament than to do it here all right how about we take a look at our impact players brought to you tonight by visit st pete clearwater and it's bailey klingler and shelby sinceri both uh, showing off their power today well, Klingler's just been outstanding at the top of the lineup for Washington. A really good leader. A couple of home runs earlier, three RBIs. Look for her to put a charge into the ball. Yeah, and Shelby Sinceri over on the LSU side. She can pitch it a little bit too, of course. Four home runs, 12 RBI for Sinceri, and just hit a three-run home run and that win earlier, that run rule win against Oklahoma State before this game. In the circle for the Tigers tonight. Getting the call is Shelby Wickersham, Leading off the junior right-hander right out of Metairie, 10, Louisiana. Sammy Reynolds to lead things off. The top two in the lineup in that big win today over Tennessee, Reynolds and Klingler. Hit three home runs, drove in six, scored six times, and then you've got the outstanding freshman Olivia Johnson right there, the designated player tonight in the three spot. Bursts onto the scene last week and was named the National Player of the Week after a terrific debut performance. First explodes any, uh, <laughs> any of those yeah. words to describe how outstanding she has been as a, just a freshman. That's the thing I've been impressed with is so many of these young athletes just coming in. They're, they're playing like upperclassmen here early. Yeah, so many freshmen, not just at this tournament, but all across the country making a big splash. Sammy hit a home run in that game earlier. One of the seniors in this lineup. Two times named to the all Pac-12 team. And she'll find a gap. Out in right center, motoring around to second base. And the lead off the board for Washington and already in scoring position. Simi Reynolds loves the inside corner. She gets a pitch that is out over the plate, didn't find any corner at all, but I just feel like she has so much power in the inner half, whether it's up on her hands or down, or she's able to go and get her barrel down to it. She is so much fun to watch play this game because she's small in stature but packs a big punch. It's already her sixth double this season, you guys. Yeah, 588 average <laughs> leadoff spot. Two home runs. Slugging percentage over 1,200. How about that for a leadoff? <laughs> <laughs> Well, this could be a very dangerous lineup. Of course, Gabby Plain is the ace of their staff. And early in the season, looking for how the rest of the staff will play out. But they know that they have some pop in the bat with Bailey Klingler showing that off today. A couple of home runs in this game off of Tennessee. Look at the way this ball is just leaving the yard opposite field. She lets that ball 
travel deep and just explosive. A little bit of an open stance. Shot foul has Heather Tarr dancing down in that third base coach's box. The Husky alum, uh, head coach now for the 18th season. Winners of the national championship in 2009. And she is the winningest coach in Husky history. Some changes to the staff. Lance Glasso is still their pitching coach. Kyle Novak is the new hitting coach. And of course, Sis Bates, one of their student assistants after the All-America shortstop graduated. One, two. You know, LSU has a, a deep staff, but you know there was a lot of intention and thought that went in to who Beth Torina wanted to match up against Washington. Wickersham, more of a spin type pitcher, change of speeds often, likes to stay down in the zone. Understanding that Washington early has shown a lot of power trying to keep the ball in the ballpark, using Wickersham, try to keep the ball down. Yeah, and Amanda, to your point, LSU, that's the type of staff they have. They have an arm for everything. Reaches for it, Pleasance at short, slings it over to first in time. Reynolds has to hold it, second one down. About the scouting report on Shelby Wickersham. Yeah, she has good movement, likes to stay down in the zone, and really she wants you to chase in the dirt. She wants you to get out of your strike zone, just like that with that off-speed curveball that was more away from Klingler. She wants you to go down in the zone with her to try to chase her off-speed stuff. All right, here's our first look at Olivia Johnson. They call her Ojo. Reached base in her first 14 plate appearances as a Washington Husky last weekend. And that included three home runs and eight runs batted in, and then opponents just started walking her. One for two earlier today with a couple of walks and a run scored. Good eye, doesn't bite it, a pitch low and outside. Look at our OPS. <laughs> it's insane. 2,400. 2.4. <laughs> on base plus slugging. Johnson fights that one off, low and in. And one of three freshmen on the junior national team that Washington has on their roster. So much talent. Just Washington really has started out so strong, making a big splash already this year. Large part to the contributions that their freshmen are giving them. And of course, Gabby playing one of the best pitchers in the country. Here's the 2 2. All, right, all, the, count. all the way down to 49 miles an hour. Wickersham drops down that off speed curveball that she throws. It has really tight spin. She wants you to chase it off the plate. Olivia Johnson able to hold back and work it to a full count. And got her. Two out. Well, it's all about the spin, the speed, and the spot. She's got all of them. The really the good right nine, rotation, Madison, really good team. location. So those two things. And it's not always about that speed. Nice tight spin, gets it underneath the hands, picks up a big strikeout of Olivia Johnson. Madison Husky here, the number four hitter with two outs. After Sammy Reynolds led off the inning with a double. Washington as Reynolds cruises home. A couple
couple of doubles in the inning for the Huskies. It really seems like Wickersham wants to work that inside corner to the righties that she's gone up against, and Husky just turns on it. Close call. It it's foul to me. <laughs> yeah, it looked like it was on the foul side of the bag whenever it crossed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, and they are yeah. going to bring them back. Okay. It's where it goes over the bag, not where it landed. Good job by the umpires. Well, let's see if Husky can do it again. Got a 1-1 one, one count. And a bound away from Cummins. Reynolds to third. Come right back to that inside corner. So a little bit lower. Right back to the pitcher. Wicker Shams got it. And they will. Keep the run off the board. LSU picking up the bats when we come back. The St. Pete Clearwater League Invitational presented by Wilson would like to recognize the following sponsors. Visit St. Pete Clearwater, Wilson, the City of Clearwater, D1 Softball, Mizuno, Jabra, Vitacost.com, Rawlings, Easton, and the Florida Sports Foundation. Thank you for your support of the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational, presented by Wilson. Pitching for the Huskies is How about a look at the Matt LSU Moore. Tigers starting lineup with Sierra Briggs in that number two spot. She and Danica Coffey have been fabulous at the top of the lineup. Sunsiri and Rudity had home run balls, three run shots earlier this evening in their big win over Oklahoma State. They will face Pat Moore who gets the call. Her third appearance of the season for the fifth year le uh, senior lefty out of Medford, Oregon. Oh, on the season, six innings 13. of work. Yeah, this is her fourth year now at Washington after a freshman campaign at DePaul. She had a no-hitter in the regionals last year. Oh, Coach Tarr was excited that she was back. Wasn't sure if she was going to retire, but decided to come back. And she's like, oh, yeah, I can always use that left arm in the circle. Versatile player. Danica Coffey was two for four with a run scored and an RBI in the Oklahoma State run rule victory. I really like the way that Danica Coffey has looked this season. I, I just think she looks like a different player from her freshman year where we saw her play 
a lot of second base fill in there. And this year playing third base and leading off. And I just feel like she looks so confident. season at RBI earlier, her first this year. That's Pat Moore. Gets the strikeout, one down. Pat Moore does a good job from that left side, Number really running that curveball yeah. away right. from lefty. So it's got a little out, a little down. She's not going to blow it past you. She just has that good late sharp movement, primarily drop and curve, but she can change eye levels with the rise ball and a change up, but it's that curve ball. Watch for her to use that today away from the lefties into the righties. When she controls that on the corners, she can be tough to hit. Briggs tries to lay down the bunt, trickles foul. Briggs, the sophomore, one for two with a couple of runs scored. She was on base three times earlier tonight. Good change. And for a strike. Going final now in Tuscaloosa. What a pitcher's duel. Montana Fouts gets the win over Keeley Richard, uh, Rochard. One, nothing. Oh, in that one. It's a tough day to be a hitter. Yes. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> Each of them had 11 strikeouts. The umpire is going to need ice more than the pitchers, right? Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> On that third strike. Sore. <laughs> Auburn continued its role tonight, too. A 6 2 win over Texas. Big one here today was Northwestern's upset in extra innings. They beat UCLA six to four. Maeve Nelson, a walk-off three-run home run. And Michigan's Coach Hutch picked up a win, so she is one shy of tying Mike Candrea for the career wins lead. Could happen here tomorrow when the Wolverines will play a couple more. And that's one thing about this tournament. Every single game you have to show up. It does not yeah. matter who you are playing. You see teams look really good in game one of the day and then show up for game two and end up getting run ruled. Yeah. Well, that home run, by the way, was off of Megan Faremo. For Maeve. Yeah, now UCLA has to play Auburn, the hottest team or one of the hottest teams in the tournament, first thing in the morning. And then later that day, Texas. Yep, we'll have that we'll one. We'll have that one tomorrow yeah. evening. Seventh pitch of the at-bat coming. Pulled foul. Well, oh, how about this moment for Maeve? Boom. On a one-two count, too. Northwestern really rallied down to their last strike. A couple of two-strike hits in that inning to keep the game alive and put the bat in the hands of Maeve Nelson. It's a good hug. I love the excitement, right? No kidding. Remember last year they had to stay in the dugout. Oh. They weren't allowed to celebrate oh, the home yeah. runs. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome to see them out again. Oh, <laughs> and great to have the Big Ten back. You know, yes. they had to play just the conference schedules. They spent, what, three weeks down in, in Orlando playing games just against one another. And great to see them back out and about. Michigan's here, Northwestern's here. Wisconsin, Kayla Conwen is back in their lineup. This battle with Sierra Briggs going up against Pat Moore. This will not go away. Pat Moore still has pitch to play with here, just a 2-2 count. Like to see her maybe throw that change up again. Maybe not so much around the plate, a little bit out of the plate, get her or a little bit in the dirt, get her to chase it. 
or expand the zone with their curveball. Or go inside, just there do the complete opposite of <laughs> anything that I mentioned. You know, that backdoor curveball is so tough, right? That's <laughs> the one thing you could see the way that Briggs was like, whoop, leaning back. She liked that pitch, too. She liked yeah. the location of it to be able to set up this next pitch. Feeling good about that spot. Eleventh pitch of the at-bat coming. And it's going to get to a dozen. Pat Moore leaves that pitch a little sweet. I think she would have liked that to be a little bit more, start a little more on the outside corner and run it. As it's a little bit through the zone, Briggs fouls it off. And Briggs wins that one. Draws the walk on the 12th pitch. It's a great at bat by Sierra Briggs. And now, it, it, because we have LSU for back-to-back -back games today, we're going to get a chance to see really how Taylor Pleasance progresses through her at bat. Struck out a couple of times and a couple of weak ground balls, but maybe she can continue to make little adjustments. That's a good swing. That's the best swing that we've seen her have today. Beth Tarina down at third base, nodding her head like, that's better. Better. Better connected with that lower body, upper body, on time, as we like to say. And it hit her. A couple of free passes. And it bumps Briggs into scoring position. It's a backdoor curveball that just looks like it just maybe goes off the, the leg. So with a couple on, Shelby Sincere. The next batter for the Tigers. And here's what she did earlier today. With she two on. That all into a pitch. This actually, she played with the game winning run because that home run put them in front by eight. And then they got three outs to run roll Oklahoma State. Beautiful swing by Shelby Sincere, who's seen the ball big early in the season. Santa Fe, Texas. 3.33 on the season. That home run, by the way, her fourth with 12 RBIs in their first seven games. You can tell she's feeling really good at the plate. She hit eight home runs all of last season, only batted 234. She's the type of hitter that can hit for both average and power. And it's really what's expected of her in the middle of the lineup, her and Georgia, Georgia Clark. Catches the outside corner. Well, and that's really the key, too, for Sinceri. When she's hitting well, protecting Pleasance, right? So it's always that power behind power, protecting each other. So Clark, Sinceri, Pleasance, when those, you know, middle of a lineup are hitting well and on time, it makes a big difference. So that's really, I think, one of the other keys for Pleasant. She just needs to hang in there and know that she's got some strength behind her. Sun Siri grounds it to short, the flip, second for one, and a double play for the Husky defense to end the threat. You know, you guys, a big question mark for Washington is filling holes up the middle of the field. They start two freshmen and Holtorf and Fiedler, and they get to turn the double play. And let me tell you, they were pumped after this, knowing it was their first to turn together.
St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson is brought to you by Visit St. Pete Clearwater, Florida and Wilson Fast Pitch, leaders in softball innovation. Good look at uh, the skyline here. St. Pete Clearwater Lead Invitational presented by Wilson. Another gorgeous evening around the bay. Top of the second, scoreless so far. Good double play to end the threat by the Washington defense. And uh, one of those involved, Kenzie Fiedler, the second baseman, will start things off. Five, six, and seven. They are uh, starting a freshman at both second base and short tonight. Big shoes to fill when assist Bates yes. uh, graduates. But what a luxury to have her back as a coach, right? To be able yeah. to work with the uh, the freshman middle infielders. And there she is coaching the first base. She would be one of the front runners uh, to be considered for the brand new gold glove that will be given out for the first time. Rawlings in conjunction with the Coaches Association. There will be gold gloves awarded this year to the top at each position as Pleasant spobbles another one and her struggles to start the season continues. All she can do is sigh right now and try and fight her way through it. This is typically a routine ground ball for Taylor Pleasant. And the one thing I know is she's not cutting the ball off in front of the bag. She's just kind of coming lateral to it. So the ball's almost playing her, but you can tell Taylor Pleasant's a little bit out of rhythm right now in her entire game, both in the box and in the field. Well, they changed it from an E6 to a single. I'm not quite sure how, but it is the case. Sarah Willis, the Canadian, in the sixth spot and in the DP role. She had a home run in the Tennessee game. Eight, one of the four they hit. She's been playing well early in the season. A pitcher for this Washington team as well. Played center, is playing center field tonight. Played center field in Puerto Vallarta too for opening weekend. Robbed a home run. I Sports saw a highlight of catch, hers. Yes. Yeah. And now you have two pitchers who aren't pitching tonight but are in the starting lineup for Washington with Brooke Nelson in the eighth spot and Sarah Wilson in the sixth. And that gives you so many opportunities as a coach to be able to use those arms, pitch by committee. And they're in the lineup, right? so they're playing defensively. If you need them to pitch, they come in. You can slide them around. You can get very creative. Strikeout. Hey, let's get you caught up on uh, what happened. You may have heard the uproar just a moment ago from the field next door. Kiki Malloy, who started out the game with a home run, adds another in the top of the seventh inning to tie the game. Tennessee and Clemson. Oh, Kiki, nice. <laughs> little side step across home plate. Uh, you can see through the trees there, the bleachers and the dirt infield just next door to us. Great setup here at the Eddie Seymour Softball Complex. Jen Cummings gets the start as the catcher. Sophomore from Redmond, Washington. Kind of seemed like with her delayed swing that there should have been a steal there. Steal. No? Yes. Freshman over at first base.
Cummings three for six on the season, has appeared in three games. Oh, nice wiggle on that pitch. 50 mile an hour, a lot of spin. Really late, sharp movement. Look at the way she's going to sell this pitch. And then look at the rotation. It is like a top. It's like a UFO. <laughs> just kind of buzzing around out there. She really cups that <laughs> yeah. pitch in her hand when she goes to release it. Really big bend in her wrist. And then when she goes inside with that drop ball, she can throw her drop ball in different levels, Michelle. It's not just a drop ball that ends up at the shoelaces. She can start it at about the belt high and then bring it to the mid thigh. Two, two to Cummings. Fouls it off. And I think as pitchers start to develop, right, we always mention how important it is to throw different speeds. A lot of pitchers really working on throwing two and three speeds, but you also have to be able to locate your pitches at different heights as well. So at your knees, mid thigh, up, elevated at the letters. Just to expand that strike zone in any direction. Yeah, it's a really good point, Michelle, because it's not just about saying, oh, I have a drop ball, oh, I have a rise ball, oh, I have a change up, but can you locate it? That, that's really the difference maker. And locate it in, different, in all different counts. Be able to throw it early in the count for a strike, be able to throw it more for a pitch that's off the plate, a chase pitch. Have consistency and command with it. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Hit her. First free pass from Wickersham. A drop ball, the trying to work the, the corners and just pulls that the in a little bit too much four, across her body. Nelson. Gets Cummings on the back leg. Fiedler with the single, Cummings hit by the pitch. And here's Brooke Nelson getting the start at first base tonight. Brooke two for six on the season. This is the third game she has played in. Another one that uh, can get in the circle and pitch as well for Washington. for three so far with runners in scoring position for Washington and that's drilled back up the middle into center field Briggs charges the throw off the line sliding in safely is Kinsey Fiedler for UW these versatile pitchers for UW getting it done in the box Great arms, but great sticks as well. Blast us right back up the middle. Sierra Briggs with a nice shot home, slightly up. Cummings unable to make the tag in time. Really good job for Washington to put the pressure on LSU here early and play to run. So Fiedler, who had reached on the error at short, comes around to score. Briggs with a really strong arm yeah. in that throw. If that would have been on the third base side of home plate, it would have been a close play. And she even bobbled it or it, it rolled up her glove, barehanded it, and then just the, the fact that the throw took Cummins to the first base side, but that was a strong throw. Strong throw. You know, it's always the, you, know, you think about in Japan, a lot of times they always use the dirt. They always try to bounce it off the dirt. That throw makes it all the way in in the air. It's a, it's a long way to throw the ball. <laughs> Run across, and here's Riley Holtorf in the nine spot. So the bottom of the lineup for UW generating a run. And the RBI double from Brooke Nelson.
Holtorf started the double play to end a threat on the bottom of the first. Opening weekend, the uh, Huskies went 5-0 and oh with four run rule wins, and that included beating Arkansas twice. So they've already seen the SEC this year. Arkansas, the co-champs in the regular season with Florida last season. Put together a tough pre-conference schedule. Heather Tarr did, trying to challenge her team early and get to travel to all these preseason tournaments too, or pre-conference tournaments like this one. They will have Texas Tech, Oklahoma State, and Clemson still on the slate here in Florida. Currently eight ranked teams on their non-conference schedule. Remember last year the pandemic was still lingering. Yeah, they had a really tough time rescheduling canceled games. Of course, the remoteness of the Pacific Northwest, it was hard to get teams to travel in there, hard to, on the spur of the moment for Washington to travel out. And they did not have the strength of schedule that they wanted and certainly that the selection committee wanted. After finishing second in the Pac-12, by all accounts, they got jobbed with a number 16 seed that forced them to play at Oklahoma in the Super Regionals. And, and had to host Michigan at home. So their regional was tough. Their Super Regional going to the number one seed. And think about this too, they're starting three freshmen. So <laughs> how do you test them? How do you get them fired up and ready to go for your season? You, you, you test them early because you don't want them cracking late in the season when things are you know, really starting to develop. Top of the order with the bases loaded for Reynolds, who doubled her first time up, found the gap out in right center. Yeah, already some activity in the bullpen. Raylan Chafin, the freshman right-hander, ball into her glove right now. She's <laughs> looking feisty out there. Look at Reynolds, five for five, batting a thousand with runners in scoring position. Oof. Two. And that, it's amazing how that pitch goes. You think, thought it was a strike, thought it was going to go 2-2, two -two, but it was called a ball, so instead it's 3-1. That's a difference that one pitch and at bat one call can make because it's a total different feel now in a 3-1 count. Strike two to Reynolds. This top three in the lineup was tearing it up against Tennessee. They went five for eight with six runs batted in. And three home runs from the top three. With one out, three base runners. Waited on the change. Field to Wickersham, and here we go. Full count. Reynolds back up the middle and through. One run is in. Cummins coming home. Nelson slides in safely. Two more on the board, courtesy of Sammy Reynolds.
And this inning, Washington just being able to use the ground and what's taken to them. Wickersham, a drop ball pitcher, so oftentimes balls are going to be hit into the ground, and that's the third eight, ball Bailey, that's hit into the ground for a base hit in this inning. Sammy Reynolds has that gap-to-gap -gap power with their doubles, but also could just drive it up the middle for a couple of RBIs. Just taking advantage of the fact that defense is in, right? That's one of the things you want to do as a hitter. Just know that if you can hit it hard, there's a good chance you can get it past those middles. Three nothing, Washington. Brooke Nelson with the RBI double, Sammy Reynolds with the two run single and a pitching change is coming. Raylan Chafin on the other side. The new pitcher for the Tigers is number 34, Raylan Chavin. So the new pitcher, Raylan Chafin, coming on, the freshman from Louisiana. And for Raylan, it will be her second appearance. She's got four innings of work through their first seven games. She's a top 20 recruit. Well, I love what coach says about her. She's like, she's stone-faced. She's super serious. <laughs> she's gonna need to be in this situation. Love to see the freshman put under pressure. Shelby Wickersham chased here in the second. This will throw with good velocity, Bailey mid to high 60s, a little bit more up in the zone. We'll mix that curve, screw, and rise. Excited to see her pitch against a really great team of Washington. And she is greeted by the big bopper, Bailey Klingler. Grounded a short in the first, hit two home runs earlier today. Runner goes, the throw down, not in time, and a stolen base for Sammy Reynolds. So now two in scoring position. You know, Michelle, it, it seems like oftentimes Beth Tarina recruits tall pitchers, and she even just 5'6". Yeah. A good velo for her size, mm -hmm. right? Mid-60s, good yeah. spin, snap. Really great arm speed as she approaches through release. Speeds up. Just watch her her arm speed as she does not slow down. She's not she's fearless through her release, spins it off. Washington trying to keep the foot on the gas here. A chance to pick up two more with one out for Klingler. And I thought it was also great what coach talked about that like she brings her bag to practice every day like she's shown up for work you know it's like yeah. it's her toolbox <laughs> right <laughs> just super serious hard working and you know Katrina loves that oh absolutely Bailey just got a piece of it Second team All-American last year. In her third season now at Washington after coming over from Texas A&M. She's played some short, some third, some second base. Still some moving pieces around the infield and she launches one. Deep into the night, into the trees and gone. A three round shot for Bailey Klingler. 
Home run, Bailey Flamer. Wow, this Washington team showing up with an offense that is putting big crooked numbers up on the board, an outside pitch, and Klingler just drives that out of the yard, immediately goes into that home run trot. <laughs> Foot down, full extension, a three-run bomb to make it a six of the game. Oh, you can hear the sound of it. Oh, man. She was run of the day. It only took her two steps to get into that trash. She yeah, slowed she it right down. What? Yeah, I'm gonna enjoy this one. It's her, it's her third, yeah, third home run. I was gonna say, of course she knows what that feels oh, like. Oh boy, yeah, she, yeah, she knows. Chance of MVP. And amazing too about her home runs, you guys, is that the first two in the first game went opposite field, and then she's also able to sit back on a changeup and pull it to the left side. Huskies having some fun early. The 6-0 lead, a six-run second inning. Also, all we do on this field is three-run home runs. I think That's it started with Maeve Nelson yeah. in the walk-off against UCLA, and then we had, what, two last game? Yeah. And now we had the one just now. And, and now it's Olivia Johnson time. That open stance with the left foot almost on the chalk way up in front of the box remember this inning started with that hit that went down as a hit but i would have called it an error yes. by taylor pleasance and there was a strikeout and then a hit by pitch and then another walk in this inning as well so a lot of freebies sets the tone, right? If you make that play and you get the strikeout, now you've got two outs. The hit by pitch doesn't hurt you as much with two outs. It's just the energy of the game it can swing so quickly. That is Taylor Edwards now out in the bullpen. Taylor has not appeared yet in the circle this year. Things have escalated quickly here. Well, it's been this way in a lot of Washington's games. They've had six wins and four run yes. wins this season. to Johnson. Grounds it to Pleasance. Snags it over to first. Two outs. See, we've got a couple of games all knotted up. UCF and Texas Tech. 3-3 three, three in the seventh. And that looks like extras. Clemson and Tennessee. In the bottom of the eighth, the Tigers trying to walk it off. Madison Husky is the ninth to the plate this inning. There's a lot of orange on that other field over there and yeah, a lot all of purple, purple on this down. field. <laughs> Good call. <laughs> and then we got black on the other field. and almost had an RBI double in the second. The call was reversed, turned into a foul ball, and then ended up grounding out.
Washington is so aggressive. And tough with two strikes. And that Klingler home run, they got a one-two count. And now Husky just not going away with two strikes. Discipline. It's easy to chase those curveballs with two strikes trying to protect. Full count. <laughs> Bad by Matioski. Draws the walk. Husky 0 and 2 behind and works her way back to draw the walk. Really good at bat. Keller at the plate right now for Clemson. Trying to end it in the eighth with a couple on board. They only need the one. It's on the field right next door to us and on the right our game as Kinsey Fiedler comes to the plate for the second time this inning big punch out and Tennessee holds and they will head to the ninth inning next door some of our uh, fans over here watching both ways right now that's the beauty of our setup here Eddie Seymour Softball Complex. A lot of folks at the, the fields, one through four, just up the street. Some really good matchups this morning, and then some of the, the big yeah. matchups here this evening. Crowds trickling down here. And all day long, great softball here in Clearwater. Tomorrow is just going to be packed, yeah. don't you think? I mean, oh, if it yeah. was this busy on Thursday and yeah. Friday, Saturday, yeah. and Sunday too, I would imagine, but. Saturday being the busiest day. Well, somewhere out there tonight, Lawyer Malloy, Kiki Malloy's dad, who graduated from UW, has a chance to watch both ways. <laughs> Kiki's hit two home runs in that game for Tennessee. Lawyer, the former football All-American. And his other daughter played for at Washington. Yes, mom was also a stud athlete. We talk about Bailey Klingler's first couple of days here. Kiki's right there with her first couple of days. Swinging a big stick. Florida State has looked very impressive. So have the Auburn Tigers through the first couple of days. Runner goes and the strikeout called anyways. Fiedler retired but six runs up on the board in the second including the Klingler three-run shot. Bailey Klingler getting all into a pitch, a three-run bomb to put the Huskies up. Six to nothing over LSU.
UCF Texas Tech update. Jada Cody, RBI single extra innings lead right now for the Knights. Trying to grab the dub. Extra innings as well between Clemson and Tennessee tonight as we check out our upcoming schedule brought to you by Wilson will be back with you at 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPNU, UCLA, and Auburn to kick off the day. We'll, we'll have the later uh, action for you, Texas and UCLA on the U. Got some terrific matchups, got ranked teams all over the joint. Good grab by Danica Coffey. Check that Klingler to Rob, Georgia Clark. <laughs> so good at the hot corner. And Michelle, she ha can play any position. Heather Tarr calls her the Swiss the Army knife for their yeah, team. Sure. And that, that ball was hit so hard. She can play second, short, first, catch. She can do it all. So, so how about Klingler, right? She's hitting a third home run today. Mm -hmm. We just saw last inning. Making defensive plays. It's amazing how that, right, that confidence, that energy yeah. flows from one side of the plate to the other. And then you look at the struggles of Pleasance, right? And how it just can pull you down when you're struggling in the box. It's just such a mental game. Long way to go, of course. Just the uh, second weekend of the regular season on the road to the 40th Women's College World Series in June. Over 2,000 games for you along the way. Pac-12 is going to be going back to a, a postseason tournament. Yeah. Big, I, I, Big 12 I, just restarted theirs. I like that. Do you guys yeah. like the postseason? I do. I, do. I, do. I think it's a, it's a really good warm-up, and, and it gives teams that maybe had an average year an opportunity to po possibly get the, the qualifier. Shallow left and coming on is Sammy Reynolds. Diving grab, two down. Next batter for the Tigers, number four, Mackenzie Roderday. Look at the way she comes in. She's going to lay out good communication. As your left fielder's coming in, your shortstop's going out, keeps her eye on the ball. And oh, yeah, Pat Moore is like, yes, my defense has me. <laughs> Two times in a row. Well, we've seen some teams a, a bit out of sorts defensively. Yeah. That one was in tune. That's mm -hmm. a left fielder's ball. Shortstop gave way. Yeah. Full layout, bang. Haltorf, the freshman, it'd be very easy for her to try to overplay that ball. Get in the way. She doesn't. She peels off Reynolds' diving catch. Well, I mean, let's be honest. We're used to seeing good defensive teams come out of Washington. That, you know, is what they hang their hat on every single year. And so when you put together this explosive offense that they have, it's just like, wow. They are a top five, top three team in the country right now. Mackenzie Rudity had that towering three-run home run over the scoreboard in her last at-bat of their Oklahoma State win, and now her first at-bat here. <laughs> That's what happens when you hit by home runs, bombs like that. The changeup is going to show up often. Yeah. <laughs> and that last pitch from Pat Moore, really nice. Taking something off it, trying to keep her to the off balance. Well, it feels good to pitch with a six-run lead, huh? This is that watch home run. This one goes. <laughs> yeah. And specifically watch the right fielder, Haley Busby. Didn't even turn around. Just a little glance over the scoreboard. What do we think that that went, you guys? You got to wear the home run chain. What do we think that went? 270? Possibly, huh? Yeah. Two fifty. All of, I mean, all I mean, 270 sells it. That's yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, I'll but. stick with it. 273. Oh, that foul ball went over into the Clemson Tennessee game. All Huskies early. The Tigers trailed twice in the game earlier tonight, rallied. And scored 10 runs, so not out of it just yet. We're only in the second inning. And 
And the two out walk for Rudity. The next batter for the Tigers, number 26, Morgan Cummins. Morgan Cummins, the catcher in the eighth spot in the lineup. Junior out of Sarasota. Jen Cummings. No relation, the two catchers, they spell their names differently as well. <laughs> By one letter, right? <laughs> Other than messing us up pregame when we were trying to pencil in our lineup cards. And now it looks like Pat Moore's ready to roll. Just a gorgeous night, great day. What, this, this is the 13th game of the day. Shout out to uh, all of our crew here behind the scenes, folks. Long days for them, bringing you all the sights and sounds. We've seen Ospreys filling up their nests on top of the lights. We, we've seen players trip over their own stirrups. We've. And a walk off. We've, see, we've seen walk offs. Yeah. We've seen the cover of a ball on the top of the wire fence out, out yeah. on top of the uh, yeah. left field wall. And of course, a lot of baby shots <laughs> in the crowd. <laughs> eating their ice cream, eating their burgers. <laughs> Typical softball stuff. Good, wholesome right? fun. And there's a beer garden, so yeah, something a little, little of something for everybody. You got it. Yes, a hot dog or two out there, and a big screen, so you can go over and enjoy mm -hmm. everything. Oh yeah. Oh, and that. Yep. He's the tail greeter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's happy. Yep. Got the food trucks out there. It's just a great event. Base knock out to left. And here come the Tigers on two. First hit of the game for LSU. Next up is the nine hitter, Sydney Next Peterson. Next up for the Tigers, number one, Sydney Peterson. Freshman out of Stockton, California, stepping in on the right side. And then the top of the order will come around again. And a couple of runners now in scoring position. Scored a wild pitch. And that'll get Lance Gasso out of the dugout. There's the pitch count for Pat. Definitely something that you know that the Washington coaching staff is thinking about is the pitching behind Gabby playing. They went on a run last year, thought that they could win a conference championship in the pack, and they used Gabby a lot at the end, maybe to the point where she was a little bit tired toward the postseason. But they didn't get a chance to really develop the rest of their pitching staff in the big games. And as a coach, you just have to commit to it and stick with it because of knowing the importance down the stretch of naming those other arms. Kelly Lynch, yeah. Kelly Lynch warms up in the bullpen. Probably reminding Pat Moore as well. Hey, uh, this is the nine hitter. Let's take care of this right here for the third out, and uh, then we'll avoid the top of the lineup coming around. LSU looked strong last game, really doing a good job of working the free passes. 
say that. Sydney swings at a pitch <laughs> out of the zone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Almost on cue, but you know, that's one of the things that this LSU team can do. They have to be more disciplined than they were last week. Those are things that they worked on knowing coming into this big tournament that they were gonna have to be very sharp with their eye and disciplined. for Danica Coffey. As the bottom three in the order all reach. Two of them walks on fourth free pass, Danica first time Coffey. through the lineup. So LSU continuing to work pitchers deep into counts. It's a luxury that the offense that Washington has supplied their pitchers and their defense early in the season because now you have a chance to keep Pat Moore out there and let her work out of this on her own, knowing that you have a six run lead and knowing, hey, even if she gave up a grand slam, that your offense is scoring a ton of runs and that you can get back in it. When you pitch by committee, you have to have pitchers be able to burn a certain number of innings, right? You, yep. you can't have pitchers go out there and throw two thirds of an inning or one inning. Uh, you, you need them to get at least, you know, one or two times through the lineup so that you're not constantly burning through the pen and then your arms are, are tired. Well, and the other Pac-12 team that is like that to watch out for this season is UCLA, mm -hmm. Megan Faremo. Not just relying on her the entire season and throwing her too much. Moore's in the driver's seat now, one and two. It low. Drifting foul out of play. Chance here for the Tigers to try and get back at it. Moore struck out Coffee on a curveball back in the first. Well, it seemed like it was going to be a pretty quick inning, right, with a routine ground yeah. ball and a nice catch out in left field. All yes. of a sudden, it's turned a little ugly. Good at bat for Coffee. Yeah, look, Pat Moore has thrown 52 pitches, not even through two innings. In the dirt, blocked. Great job by Jen Cummings. Keep that ball. Relatively close to her, not allowing LSU to play to run. Three two with two out, so they'll be on the move. Bases juiced for Danica Coffee. And a run will score. Good at bat for Coffee to draw the walk. Now that's the third of the inning. And 
And the bases will still be loaded for Sierra Briggs. Trying to get her that curveball. Actually ball. hit her. Yeah. yeah, it looked like it slipped out of her hand, Michelle. And yeah. yeah, that may be all for Pat Moore. Pitching change coming for Washington. The threat still exists for LSU. Back in a moment. The new pitcher for the Huskies, number 27, Kelly Lynch. New pitcher is Kelly Lynch, the right-hander from Noonan, Georgia, former high school national the player Clearwater of the year. Brought to you by Visit St. Pete Clearwater. Kelly was five and seven last Western season. One USC appearance so far this year has thrown just two and a third. She was behind Taryn Alvello and Gabby Plain the first couple of years of her career. And now she will come on. Uh, with a bit of an issue, one run is in and the bases are still loaded and here come the two, three, four hitters with a couple of outs. She comes on for Pat Moore. Sierra Briggs walked her first at bat, which was a 12 pitch AB. Next batter for the Tigers, number 88, Sierra Briggs. with coffee at first base they're a gap away from being just two runs down because if Briggs is able to find a gap right here coffee with two outs is going to be running she has speed she could score make this a two-run game yeah, coffee at first Cummins at third Peterson at second side of the plate has been tight all day long. Really. A lot of pitchers rely on that. Two one pitch. Three and one. Spot right there, top the corner. You know, sometimes, as a catcher, important to if you're not always getting that corner just to give a little bit more body lean, a little bit more movement with the glove into the zone. Help your pitcher out. Three two pitch again with two outs, and there go the runners fouled off by Briggs. A 
has walked already three times in their eight innings in two games tonight. And a big strikeout for Lynch. LSU gets a run in, but they leave them loaded. Kelly Lynch with a little bit of upspin here, the low rise ball to get the strikeout with the bases loaded. Still have a five run lead. Attention softball fans, are you looking for the best coverage of college softball? D1 Softball is the leading source for everything Division I softball. Head over to d1softball.com for features, rankings, podcasts, and more all season long. You can use code C -E 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 for Oh, wild finish next door for Clemson at the plate, trying to win it. And the hit to short, the throwing miscue to second, then the throwing error to home as Matty Moore will come in to score. The Tigers walk it off. The tough luck continues for Tennessee as they go final in uh, the bottom of the ninth inning. Leading off for the Huskies, number So we are the last one standing Lewis. here, gang. <laughs> it's just us. At the top of the third, we go. At a 6-1 Washington lead over LSU, the 13th game of the day, an action-packed Friday for you. And we've really seen a lot of everything. We, we saw some pitching gems, right? Kelly Maxwell almost had a no-hitter. Yeah. We've seen some uh, run rules. We've seen some extra inning walk-offs. It's a... Uh, if it can be done on a softball field, it has been happening here in Clearwater. Yeah, there were oh, yeah. three or four extra inning games yeah. this afternoon. We got 12 more tomorrow. Woohoo! It'll start at 10 o'clock on ESPNU with UCLA and Auburn. LSU has to come back tomorrow morning and play again against Notre Dame at 10.30. Ooh. After their late night last yes. night. Yes. Northwestern against Clemson all of a sudden becomes interesting after Northwestern's big upset of UCLA. Michigan, Florida State. Tomorrow afternoon on the ACC Network. How about Florida State? They've been swinging it. Mm -hmm. Washington is back in action against Texas Tech tomorrow afternoon, and we will get a lot of Texas. Our game's tomorrow, 4 o'clock on ESPNU, Texas, UCLA, and then on the Longhorn Network tomorrow night, Texas and UCF. Texas looking to rebound after a couple of losses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, uh, it's been a struggle for the Longhorns, for the Fighting Irish in Notre Dame, for Tennessee. Well, not what they were hoping for when they arrived. Wisconsin had a couple of nice wins here. Sarah Willis laces that to center and right air is Sierra Briggs. She hit that ball so hard. And she's so amped up about it, she went ahead and just rounded the bases, <laughs> went hard into second. <laughs> Having some fun. 
That's that with the Husky number 19. I mean, talk about being on time and hitting that ball on a line. Just yep. playing catch with Sierra Briggs out there in center field. It was a six-run second inning for LSU. The three-run home run from Bailey Klingler. It seems a long time ago, doesn't it? LSU countered with one run in the bottom of the second and then left the bases loaded. Jen Cummings uh, with Brooke Nelson on deck. Bottom of the order here for you, Doug. like D'Lo with the Velo is working the, the Twitter box tonight. Danielle Laurie <laughs> tweeting out, have a day, Bailey. Great to have Danielle back with us. The ESPN announced family after picking up a bronze medal with Team Canada this past summer. Great for the Canadians. So many of whom, in fact, all of them, I think played collegiately here in the United States. A lot of familiar names on their roster. A lot of talent. They were uh, one run away, right? They lost one to nothing yeah. to Team USA, one yeah. to nothing to Japan. If they would have won either of those games, potentially could have played for the gold medal. Yeah. Mark Smith, who was the head coach, was a great men's fast pitch. He used to play yeah. uh, against the Clearwater Bombers. A lot of history of men's fast pitch in this area. Yes. Bombers, one of the more legendary in the country. Yeah, Herb Dudley. The, Fields named appropriately after Eddie Seymour and Herb Dudley. So a lot of a lot of great fast pitch in this area, both men's and women's. And a strikeout for Raylan Chafin. Came on in that last inning in relief. Chafin working a little bit of a scries. It looks like a rise ball, screwball combination. He's going to run four, up and away. Nelson. Cummings. Well, she was greeted with the three-run home run and then has settled down a bit here. Mm -hmm. Brooke Nelson, RBI double in that second inning. Yeah, I like the energy that Chafin brings in the circle. Gets real excited about those strikeouts, just trying to pump up this LSU team. I mean, you think about it, their last offensive half inning, they were swinging away from just getting right back into this game. Strike three and a one, two, three inning for Chafin. And is this a bit of a momentum shifter? How about Chafin, the freshman, getting it done, the curve on the outside corner. And just the energy, Chafin, with the punch out.
Tiger Lee. Let's check out tonight's game track brought to you by Wilson. Sammy Reynolds, some good glove work. Also good with the bat. Klingler had a three run shot. Coffee had the RBI walk, but they have stranded four, including the bases loaded in that last inning. And we've already seen four pitchers, and it's a 6-1 Washington lead for Taylor Pleasance, Shelby Sanseri, and Georgia Clark coming around for the Tigers. Kelly Lynch is the reliever. Those are not numbers we have come to expect through the first couple of seasons for Taylor. Hit 316 last year with power. Made the U.S. national team over the summer. Heading into next summer, I should say. Gets a hold of that. Back to the track, back to the base of the wall, and it will stay in the yard as Madison Husky is there. But the best contact of the weekend so far for Taylor. That's better, right? We've seen her progressively get better and better and better every single at bat to where you know, all she wanted to do was just feel the ball, Shelby lift to the Perry. outfield again instead of strike out or hit a ground ball to the infield. That's better, though, by Taylor Pleasance. Let's wait to see what she does her next at bat. Maybe one gets out of here. Shelby Sun Siri grounded into a double play in the first. Oh, nice off speed from Kelly Lynch. Give up a loud out to the fence. First pitch back with that changeup, trying to say, oh, we keep this in the back of your mind, hitters. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> Change up, best weapon ever, right? Because you throw it there, it, whoop, it gets you a little off balance, and then you throw your heat, and it does that. It puts a foul ball back in the stands. We've been talking for years about three speeds. We, we heard several coaches this week on our conference calls talk about four speeds now that not just the different planes, but the different speeds. And more speeds, the better. Hitters caught up with those three speeds. You need another. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's, are we going up to 75? Or are we going down to 45? What, where is that fourth speed, I guess? <laughs> A lot of times you're like fastball, curveball, drop, anything down in the zone to typically clocks harder. So those will be your like high 60s to 70. Your rise ball typically will be mid 60s. Then you have your off-speed drop, low 60s, and then your changeup should be 48 to 52 miles an hour. So we're just defining it a little better. I think in the yeah. past we've all thrown them, yeah. but uh, we're just You need a bunch of wedges in your golf bag. You need a <laughs> bunch of different pitches in your, oh, because they're in looking, your holster out there. Yeah. They're looking at the data all the time, so yeah. it's yes. like ingrained in their mind, the numbers. too high it's too high <laughs> thought Bima was gonna lay out for that one I I was prepared to not do that but <laughs> the way the netting he, here is he, we, I don't think we've had a ball come into the no we, we closed last we? year I think it was close last yeah year. had would have to have the right spin on it Wow lifted down the line and just foul that was slicing towards the foul pole. Boy, is she confident right now at the plate. Oh, it, just swinging so freely. Somebody's by a microphone out there. It did not hit the foul pole. It was close, but... <laughs> her hands to everything you know no matter what the speed is no matter which side of the plate it is get your stance and get your glove ready
Oh, yes. Just got a touch. <laughs> it was a nice located pitch. That would have been a ball lower, but it would have been a ball out of the yard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, Shelby was thinking 6-2 mm -hmm. on that swing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's swinging big. Two and two. She is wrecking the arch of her foot tonight. With <laughs> That's the second time we've heard that. comes the 11th pitch of this at bat, 2-2 two, two count. Called strike three. And a little bit of a stare down from Shelby, didn't like that call one bit. Uh, looks like Lynch is gonna step a little open and then put this underneath the body, almost like a screwball. So it's coming in a little up and Shelby Sinceri thinks that this is a ball. I don't know, that looks like a pretty good pitch right at the belt. Georgia Clark. Smokey Eds, Bobby DeMeo, Tom Meyer, Cameron Ellison, our four person crew tonight. of tough outs that Lynch went up against in Pleasance and then Sinceri with that long fly ball out for Pleasance and then Sinceri just not going away but Kelly Lynch fighting through to get two outs in this inning. Clark, who hit three home runs last week and is uh, sitting in the heart of this batting order, pulled off one of the better gems of the tournament earlier today with a squeeze bunt in their win over Oklahoma State. Not thinking bunt there. That's it a long way. Is that Safety Harbor out there, Smitty? Where, where did that one land? In Georgia. the kitchen. In Georgia? Georgia. <laughs> Due north. Full count, Roster, and a two out base runner, Georgia Clark. Next bat for the Tigers, number eight, Savannah Stewart. I'm gonna bring up Savannah Stewart, flew out to left field in the second. I believe that was the uh, Full extension layout from Sammy Reynolds on the catch. First pitch swinging. the grass to make the play as Kinsey Fiedler. They have looked pretty good up the middle. The two rooks at second and short. 
Here she comes, due up this half inning. Boom! Bailey found the barrel and drove in three the last time up. March and it's madness and it's coming up exclusively on ESPN and ABC. We get underway March 16th. On the road to the national championship, Stanford Cardinal, your defending champs. They're they're right there near the top. South Carolina though, right now, the team to beat. Just underway, week number two in the college softball season. And uh, one of the great tournaments in the early part of the year here, the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitation presented by Wilson. We missed it last year. Didn't yes, get to have did. it. Yes, we did. And then in 2020, it was one of the last things that we got to do before, before everything did. shut down. Nine and then the top for Washington. Riley Holtorf walked and scored in that six-run second inning. to see who UCLA pitches tomorrow against mm -hmm. Auburn, yeah. you know, because yep. they threw for ammo against Northwestern. They lost in extras, but there's no easy game from here on out this weekend for them. And Auburn, who look like, you know, on schedule, maybe one of their easier games yeah. this weekend. And I use that loosely because every mm -hmm. team is just so competitive. But now they're going to have to decide who they want to throw against a hot hitting team. And then we'll see them in their second game tomorrow against Texas. Torf with the base hit, which likely Paramo will get the ball in that game. So it's like, okay, then who will pitch against Auburn? I believe that's UCLA and Auburn to start things off for us tomorrow on the slate. 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPNU. And then Notre Dame LSU on the SEC Network tomorrow morning at 10.30. Quick turnaround for the Tigers. <laughs> yes. Going the opposite way, and that's deep, and it's out. Sammy Red.
Reynolds continues to swing a hot bat. Her second home run in as many games home today. Slamming Sammy, I'll tell you what. Three for three in this game, home run earlier. Just so quiet, foot down on time. Look at her head to her eyes. She really sees this ball deep into the zone. It's an outside pitch and she just goes apo taco with it. Woo! Next man for the Huskies, number eight, Bailey Klingler. And Bailey Klingler is due up next, and let's see if Beth Tarina is going to make a pitching change here. Looks like she will. And go get Raylan Chafin before she sees Klingler again, who hit the three-run home run off of her earlier. How about your partner? And, uh, we will take a break and be Good. right back. The new pitcher for the Tigers. Smitty, how about the versatility of Bailey Klingler's home run balls today? Well, besides the fact they're all going out of the yard, they're going out at different locations. How about right field, center field, left field? She can hit them to all fields. It's a good spray chart right there. Spray chart, spray chart. Three home runs on the day, I believe off of three different pitchers. And here she comes again to face Taylor Edwards, who uh, we believe this is her debut this season in the circle. And Klingler, deep into the hole, Pleasant slings it over to first. They get her. Washington immediately now thinking run rule here. They need one more. And then they have to take care of LSU a couple more innings. One down for Olivia Johnson. Struck out in the first, grounded out to short in the second. There's Edwards, a sophomore. Five seventy one on the season for Olivia. Sierra Romero in the house. 
really good hitters right there. Alex mm -hmm. Powers, Amanda Sanchez. Yeah. Yeah. Johnson, and that will drop in for a base hit. Peterson just quite couldn't get there. Good effort by Sidney Peterson. There was just a lot of room because of how deep the outfield was playing, respecting the power of Olivia Johnson. Just out of the reach by what, about a half foot? See what the change is. This a uh, runner or a hitter that's about to pinch here? Looks like a runner. Jalen Alchin will come on for Johnson, who can re enter. His running at first base, number 42, Jalen Alchin. That's bad for the Husky, number nine, Madison Husky. Here comes Madison Husky, a ground out and a walk. Eight of the nine in the lineup have reached base. Six of the nine have scored a run. That second inning was a doozy. Nice use of doozy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I worked hard on that. <laughs> <laughs> Another good game that happened today was Florida taking on Duke yeah. in Gainesville. They ended up winning 9-3. to three. Skylar Wallace had four RBI. Mm. Four different players had oh, RBI for had Florida. Dinger. Yep, had a home run. Transfer from Alabama who could not play last year. Could be a, one of the bigger impact players around the country this year. Shelby Walters uh, took the took the loss mm -hmm. for Duke. She's she's a good pitcher. I mean, she can roll some ground balls. Mm -hmm. Here comes the one-two pitch. That is launched deep center field on the run and just out of the reach of Sierra Briggs, and a run will score, and sliding in safely with a triple is Madison Husky. Madison Husky drives this ball to the outfield. Rise ball up, she just connects, front foot down, really good swing. But all of a sudden, I was thinking, is that a Leah Andrews? Who, is that an Andrews? No, it's a Sierra Briggs, and it just goes over her glove. It looked like she was going to catch it at one point. Really good effort in the outfield, but Washington continues to tack on the runs. 9-1 lead, and it's Kinsey, Kinsey Fiedler. Yeah, from our angle behind home plate, it looked like yeah. Briggs was a lot closer yes. to that ball, and then you saw it from the side, and so it's just a little yeah. ways yeah. away from it. But I thought it went off her glove. I did too. Yeah. I, th <laughs> I thought it might have been in her glove, but no. Oh. Oh, and to Fiedler, she tries to go opposite with it. Runner will tag and hold up at third, and oh, they would have scored another one there. Instead, it's the second out, no damage done. That's an important run for Washington because Next batter for the Huskies, be up by eight runs and Sarah trying to hold Lowe. on to that lead in a shorter game. Yeah. Sarah Willis. Oh for two, a strikeout and a line out. And yeah, now the runner's gonna try and come home and score and she's out. Actually thought that was a hit by pitch, but guess they're not gonna call it. A few more in, however, to make it nine more. Award-winning beaches, high-energy attractions, Major League Sports, and over 40 craft breweries. 
Make every visitor a fan. Create your lineup at visitsaintyclearwater.com. to the 2022 St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson. 9-1 our score, Washington with the lead over LSU. The 13th game of the day for us as we move to the bottom of the fourth and we're joined by Beth Torino. Coach, down by eight right now. What's your message to the team? I think we're swinging well. I mean, even our outs are loud outs right now. You know, I think we're doing Ready a good job. So just chip away at it. Not going to try and get them all right here in this inning. But, um, you know, I, I think we're running out of gas a little bit. But we're going to keep chipping away at it and giving them our best shot. Yeah, and, and Coach, I, I've been impressed with your pitch selection today. A lot of free passes you guys have earned. How do you teach your kids to be selective of pitches? Uh, I think, you know, all the credit goes to Lindsay and Howard and Sandra who work with our offense. I think, um, you know, we have some great BP arms too. <laughs> Alex and Lucas, give them a shout out because those guys do a great job, work so hard for us every day. But a lot of work, a lot of reps. So um, we have a great staff that does a really good job. All right. Thank you so much, Beth. Thank Thanks, you. Coach. All right, they will try and chip away at it. They uh, they do find themselves right now in eight-run rule territory with an at-bat here in the fourth and again in the fifth. So plenty of time to work with. And it will be Mackenzie Rudity, Morgan Cummins, and Sidney Peterson, bottom of the order here, due up. to face Kelly Lynch. <laughs> Kelly came on in the last inning, so. First time she's seen. Popped up left side. And oh. unable to hold on is Holtdorf. I think that's one of the hardest plays for young shortstops. You almost overrun the ball. It's going to start coming back to the line. See, she's going to come in. Third base gives way, and you can see just overruns it a little bit and off, off the glove. So just a really talented freshman that we have. We'll continue to talk about it, not just this weekend, but all year. It just seems like every team has an impact freshman. Rudity, like the second baseman and shortstop for Washington, Beadler and Holtorf, and of course, Olivia Johnson. And, and getting a lot of playing time. You yeah. know, sometimes when you have those super seniors in front, you don't always get the, the playing time, but they have here. Even the Auburn freshman, Briellis, with four home runs as Kelly Lange gets a strikeout on a rise ball away. It's really good up movement, especially up and away from lefties. One down for Lynch, and that'll bring up Morgan Cummings.
trying to play? that up one and one that one cut across the plate one and two the 2-2 pitch. Full count. Kelly Lynch had surgery in the off season and it's been it's cleared in November, so you can tell still kind of working her feel back. Yep. Gets the infield pop up. Two down. Another pitcher on their team, too, that can hit is Kelly Lynch. It's pretty cool that they have three pitchers yeah. on their yeah. team who can hop in the offense. Sydney Peterson in the nine spot walked in the second. Well, because they're already in the lineup, to your point, Amanda, you can slide them in and out to the to the circle without burning them mid-game. And when you have to pitch by committee, that, that's going to make a big difference. Definitely seems like Washington has options, right? Even think about how Jadlyn Alchin is a tremendous athlete on their team, didn't get the start today. Sarah Willis was out there. It just seems like every player is pushing each other at positions. They're giving opportunities to different players to see who's going to be able to step up. Silent Rain Espinoza is out there right now, coming on at first base. Seen her a lot at third base last year. Well, one of the smaller squads, 17, I believe, on their roster. Yeah. Some of them, have, you know, some of the teams here have had uh, high, mid to high 20s. Yeah. hit Peterson and here comes the top of the order with two outs. Got hit on the wrist checking to make sure she's okay. Tigers number 13, Danica Coffee. Danica Coffee. A strikeout and a walk.
That's in for a strike. One on one. Michelle, you can just tell the difference that a smaller strike zone makes in the feel of a game, right? There's more foul balls, there's longer at bats, there's more offense going on, and it just mm -hmm. it really does change the complexion and the feel of a game. Yeah, absolutely. Longer at bats, one and two. Well, I think we, you know, you have to remember the strike zone is three-dimensional. And so if that ball comes through any part of it, in my opinion, or I should say that pitch goes through any part of that three-dimensional zone, it should be called a strike. And we're starting to see more and more offense because as the zone gets squeezed, the pitchers have to bring the ball through the zone for a much longer period of time, so therefore the hitters have a greater advantage to be able to make contact. Not that I'm complaining, I'm just... Nope. That's a an very observance. good observation. Out of play from Coffee. And really, it just takes a few close calls that mm. don't go the way of a pitcher. And it doesn't have to be, oh, there's 25 calls. It could be just a handful that really changes the complexion of an inning and of an entire game. Absolutely. The pendulum <laughs> swings very quickly. Yeah, it really <laughs> does. Base hit, Coffee. Next batter for the Tigers, number 88, Sierra Briggs. And it's Sierra Briggs. A walk and a strikeout for Sierra tonight. And we've got another pitching change coming. And right, we'll be back in a second. The new pitcher for the Huskies is number four, Brooke Nelson. is Brooke Nelson who actually started out the ball game playing first base tonight. And the junior from Bonnie Lake Washington comes on with a couple on and two out here in the bottom of the fourth and an eight run lead. And how about the scout on Brooke? She's got through with good velocity, really developed her drop ball over the past couple of years. We'll mix in an off speed, rise, curve, and change up. That is Sierra Briggs. So Briggs with a couple on. In for a strike. It's crazy to look at the scorecard and and see that Coffee and Briggs have hit almost every inning. And you look at Washington, it's kind of the same thing. They've only had a few more batters come up to the plate, but Washington has been able to capitalize on their opportunities, and LSU has not. And that second inning where they left the bases loaded, that definitely Huge. hurt them. Yep. 
and the score isn't even close, nine to one. But when you look at the score card and see how many plate appearances there've been, pretty yeah. close. Yeah, the five left on base for LSU versus just the two for Washington because they've played in them. <laughs> oh, there's the one two to Briggs. And that's a base hit. Throw will come into the infield and a run will score to make it nine to two. As Briggs picks up an RBI. Second off speed pitch that just hangs just enough and Briggs is gonna capitalize on it. She's gonna go opposite field. Nice barrel up on it and of course, Peterson's gonna be running. Peterson was the nine hitter hit by a pitch and she comes in to score. And here's Taylor Pleasance. First pitch swinging, pops it up. Nelson calling for it and she's got it. Side retired. Run the game this season with Meta, a new game-changing fast pitch bat from Louisville Slugger. Learn more and customize your favorite bat at slugger.com. St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational, presented by Wilson, is brought to you by Visit St. Pete Clearwater, Florida, and Wilson Fast Pitch, leaders in softball innovation. Now the downtown Tampa skyline. And we are across St. Pete Clearwater in a 9-2 Washington lead over LSU as we move to the top of the fifth inning. Six, seven, and eight are due up for Washington. Leading off for the Huskies, number six and six, Sarah Willis. Sarah Willis, 0 for 2, a strikeout, and a line out to center. Taylor Edwards back out there in the circle for LSU. From Ontario, California, stepping in. So there's a little misty. Yeah, a little bit of dew out on the grass. The ball goes out. Willis 
swings through it, one and two. Both of these teams have a lot of options on their pitching staff, deep staffs, and gonna be good to be able to get them some innings this weekend. Multiple different pitchers coming in for LSU, multiple different pitchers coming in for Washington. Oof, wow. Coach. <laughs> Coach is like, still got the moves down there. Yeah, bailing out of the way, uh huh. She's like, I'll just move to the back of the box <laughs> yeah. into left field. Scoot on back. <laughs> She had a busy summer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that her natural habitat as well? Was she third base when she played at Washington? Heather Char, third and catcher, I think, a little bit. Yeah. I'm checking with Karen Johns. I think that might have been. That's her. That's her home turf over there. Got Willis to reach. One down. You can tell Edwards has some good movement. Gets Willis to chase well out of the zone, but there's been a couple of swings and misses against her that you can tell are fooling these hitters. Jen Cummings hit by a pitch and scored in the second and then struck out in the third. Sends that one out to left. Two down. There she is, third yeah. baseman from 94 to 97. Those are sweet pinstripe unis, too. Yes, they are. Number four, Brooke Nelson. That was with uh, Teresa Wilson. They got the Program cranked up. They were going to the World Series year in and year out. Played for the Natty in 1996. And now, pretty much perennial trips to the World Series. And she was on that crew that went for the first time. Down at third by Coffey, and time to make the throw to first. A one, two, three inning for Taylor Edwards. We'll chat with Heather Char when we come back. Visit St. Pete Clearwater is your official source of visitor information. And with so much to do in St. Pete Clearwater, may we suggest your first stop be visit stpclearwater.com. Find the inside scoop on beaches, a guide to our arts, restaurants, attractions, and events, all near you. Time to start planning.
welcome you back to the 2022 St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson. 9-2 Washington with the lead over LSU as we head to the bottom of the fifth. We also welcome in Heather Tarr. Coach, you guys are just continuing to put pressure on offense and scoring a lot of runs. What are you seeing out of your offense this season so far that has stuck out to you the most? Uh, just trying to work the process a little bit, make sure we are conscious about where our heads are at and getting good pitches to hit. And Coach, you have a couple of rookies up the middle defensively. What do you like about them? Yeah, they're fun. Uh, sometimes <laughs> with rookies, you don't know what you're going to get yet, and uh, that's what you love about it. Yeah. Awesome. All right, well, thank you very much, Heather. We appreciate it. Thanks, you guys. Leading off of the Tigers. Huskies with that big six run second Tubby inning. And that's been the difference the three run home run for Bailey Klingler. Sammy Reynolds had a two run single in that inning, and Sammy also with a two run home run in the fourth. So again, just like they did earlier today against Tennessee, the top two in the order, just phenomenal. Madison Husky with an RBI triple today. Let's see, that's, uh, so for the top two, Reynolds and Klingler, that's five home runs today, nine runs scored, and 13 runs batted in. Mm -hmm. Those are supposed to just be your table setters, and they're <laughs> cleaning the tables and doing the dishes. And Well, I was going to ask her about them, and then I thought, well, I better not, because, you know, didn't want to. Don't You don't believe in the stir, stir announcer the, jinx, do you? The juju. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sunsiri, Clark, and Stewart do up here for LSU. They got a run back in the fourth. RBI double from Sierra Briggs. Still smarting from uh, that second inning where they left the bases loaded. Nice change up. Yeah, that looked good. And you can tell they kind of had a strategy one time through the order for each of these pitchers. Sarah Willis right now is warming up in the bullpen. Wouldn't be surprised if we get to that fifth inning or sixth inning if we get to see her come in as well. There is Willis. Next the Tigers, number 25. Good strike out here Clark. of Sonseri. I love the changeup. That was the setup, right? That's right. Chasing out of the zone there. Had a great at batter last at bat. I mean, LSU just has three hits. Got on with several free passes, but. Nine hits for Washington, just three hits for LSU. And the two runs that have scored for LSU have been the free passes, so the, the base on ball to Rudy and then Peterson with the hit by pitch in the last inning. I mean, it's interesting when you, you look back at the Olympic games and the pitchers that threw in the Olympics and you kind of compare the college, obviously different level of athletes, but those Olympic pitchers, it's it's about their whip. They they do not allow anybody on base. The the you know the walks and the hits, specifically more the walks or the free passes, are just they're just not giving up. They're stingy. And how many times we talk about the free passes here? Yeah. And every coach, every collegiate coach, will talk about the freebie war and mm -hmm. say, if we win the freebie war, we're going to win the game. I really like the efficiency of Brooke Nelson. She is no nonsense. <laughs> Give me the ball, let me sling it. We've talked about the versatility. She's played first base. Willis, Willis may come into pitch. She's played in the mm -hmm. field. And Kelly Lynch, who was Kelly pitching, Lynch. is now playing first base. <laughs> the glove of Holtorf at short. You know, the coolest part about Holtorf playing 
shortstop as a freshman is that she has Sis Bates in the dugout to get to look up to and, and learn from. And if I'm sure it's a role it's model of hers. Savannah Stewart. Oh, that one handcuffed her. Yeah, it did. Got on her quick. Hard hit ball. Scored a single. There's Sis. We are used to seeing that shortstop. Last year's Defensive Player of the Year in the Pac-12 and the all-time hits leader at UW. Pinch running at first, number nine, Madeline. She even did a little recruiting this summer because of Heather Tarr traveling and also yep. Lance Glasso. She went out on the road. Heather was with the U.S. team in Tokyo. Can you imagine if you're a middle infielder? How do you say no to Sis Bates? I know. <laughs> you're like, sign me up. <laughs> Even did some at-home visits with Heather, she told us, which, I mean, chat with Sis. I mean, she could chat with anybody, yeah. literally. She doesn't know a stranger. There's Madeline Giglio, the pinch hitter. Excuse me, the pinch runner here as Savannah Stewart up. And that will be over the head of Sammy Reynolds, who was playing in short. Gilio will hold at third and a couple in scoring position. Savannah Stewart. A lot of different tools. She can stand in and hit. She can slap. And this one, she turns it over. She slaps and is just going to punch it over Reynolds' heads. And that's probably the reason why Reynolds was playing in is because she saw that Stewart was slapping. But a pitch that just is a little bit elevated, and she lifts it out over left fielder's head, Reynolds. Two on for Rudity. middle one run is in here comes a number to the plate and LSU making some noise two run single Rudy hitting early in the count gonna drop ball in the inside corner Those driving it right back up the middle of the field Beth Tarina sending Savannah Stewart gonna score easily Potentially looking at the bullpen here. It's actually LSU that is huddling up right now, the coaching staff with uh, Morgan Cummins due up. And a 9-4 game. All of a sudden, you look down, and LSU has six hits. We were just mm -hmm. talking about how they had three. Picking up three consecutive in this inning. Looks like Coach Glasso is going to go out there right now, potentially. Yep. With a glove, so. So a pitching change and a glove change for Kelly Lynch. And it looks like Brooke Nelson will stay in at first base. Back in a moment.
Re-entering as pitcher for the Huskies, number 27, Kelly Lynch. This is now the seventh pitching change for the two clubs tonight. And we're still just in the bottom of the fifth inning, a, a game that is now two and a half hours in the making. <laughs> well, UW's still bringing the energy. Still early, West Coast. <laughs> <laughs> the players always know where the cameras are these days. They've gotten very used to it. Well, it was a 9-1 lead, and now LSU starting to ruffle some feathers here. Third time through the lineup, we saw them do that against mm -hmm. Oklahoma State as well, making some adjustments. Even though you know, it's different, different pitchers, it's uh, you're seeing a lot of the same sort of pitches show up. And uh, for LSU, what do we got? Five hits in the last seven at bats here. Three straight hits, including the two-run single for Mackenzie. Rudity, and here is Morgan Cummins. All the action at the bottom of the LSU lineup. long day for LSU, right? <laughs> I mean, it was just today that they landed yeah. in Florida. It's been a long, yeah, 24, 48 hours for them. Yes. Did you figure they probably practiced before they were supposed to travel mm -hmm. on Thursday we're in class? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, showing great heart here tonight. Mm -hmm. And then with the 1030 start, they'll have to wake up pretty early. Yes take care of business tonight too in terms of getting fed training room stuff Michelle, if we're taking a look at how Washington might approach game two of series mm -hmm. and, and throwing the entire staff for the rest of the year, oh, just man. one time through and the flexibility that we've mentioned numerous times of the pitchers who can play other positions and hit and not have to leave the game so they can just move them around and put them in there whenever they want to in the circle. Yeah, they're gonna have to because you, the one thing that's tough when you do have that single, like really good arm, like their Gabby playing, is that when you do get the lead in a game two, do you warm her up or do you just say committed to resting her because you know she's throwing game three? Yeah. So do you, if you've won game one, it, it, those are big and tough decisions because if it doesn't work right, then you've now used her three days in a row if you have to come back and use her in game three. So it's always a very tough and interesting decision for coaches trying to use that ace arm when you don't have a lot of, uh, you have to pitch by yeah. committee behind her. Well, and think about how different last year was too when the Pac-12 was playing four game series oh, and that yeah. fourth game, quote unquote, didn't matter for the standings and just trying to navigate that whole process. I mean, last year was just tough schedule wise for a lot of conferences. Full count here to Cummins. 
Well, we've seen the counter punch too from opposing coaches. Okay, well, maybe I don't throw my ace game one against Gabby Plain. Save her for game two, and then it's all hands on deck to try and win the series for game three. Yeah. Yeah, because it's really not the, the day of rest, right? They can, it's easy for pitchers to throw a back to back yeah. day. It, it's more just the total amount of pitches, mm -hmm. including the bullpen and getting warmed up. Cummins, and that's going to drop in for a base hit. The hit parade continues. That's the fourth in a row. Fourth in a row, and six of their last eight hitters have reached on singles. Just consistency, station to station, getting it done. Yeah, look at the difference through the first three and the last two. And the pinch hitter here is Raylene Gutierrez in the, the ninth spot the Tigers, in the lineup. Number 55, Raylan Gutierrez. Which is interesting because Sidney Peterson was on base twice <laughs> in this number nine spot <laughs> with a walk and a hit by pitch. Well, and how about this stat from Karen Johns? Five of their seven hits have come with two strikes. It's just unable mm -hmm. to get the put away. Yeah, a lot of foul balls, too. Just you know, getting rid of pitches that are close and until the mistake shows up and they take advantage. It's Carrington Hushmanzada, the pinch runner, now down at first as well. And it quickly goes 0-2 to Gutierrez with the top of the order coming around again. Got her. Two down. You know, Michelle, when Lynch gets her strikeouts against left-handed hitters, it's usually with this pitch, just that scries like we talked about before. I think that one was supposed to be more of a screwball. You could tell with how she finished it, but it still had that up movement. Big second out. Coffee has reached twice with a walk and a single. to left. Reynolds is there. Side is retired. A couple more stranded, but a couple more on the board and a 9-4 ball game through five.
Hey, here's what happened a little earlier today. Megan Ferrero delivers, and Maeve Nelson sends it out. A walk-off three-run home run in extra innings. Shelby Sunsiri tattooed one as well. It was a run rule win for LSU over Oklahoma State. And then, oh boy, some follies in extra innings. The Tennessee defense could not get a handle on things. And the Clemson Tigers would slide it off for the W and the celebration. And our final game of the day, nine to four. Washington with the lead over LSU as we head to the top of the sixth inning. Well, the new pitcher for the Tigers is Shelby Sunsuri. So we have our eighth pitching change of the night. Kate Callen is now in catching, and Hushman Zada goes to left field. Off of the Huskies, number For those three, of you that Riley still have your Holtar. scorebooks out with us tonight. <laughs> my, my scorecard's a little, I don't, I don't know. There, there's a lot of erasure <laughs> going on. Eraser dust also all a over good, it. Also a good <laughs> 80s band, by the way. Thank you very much. <laughs> Riley Holtorf in the nine spot in the lineup. Washington here in the top of the sixth. Sunsiri, the right-hander, coming on for her fifth appearance of the season. She's got 14 innings of work in. A couple of starts, a couple of reliefers. Yeah, she's one of those uh, ace, uh, A, B, or C, you know, experience-wise. So what's the message that Coach Tarina is sending to her club that she's putting one of her best arms in a game that they're down by, yeah, by five think, runs late. I think they still got a shot exactly. with a couple of ABs. Absolutely. That's right. And she gets the strikeout. You know, she can throw a little bit of everything, yes, Michelle, but I really always general. liked her drop ball to be her out pitch, whether it's a strikeout pitch or just a, a ground ball out that she can feed to her infield. Can mix speeds really well. That Tarina said that was a really big focus for her in the offseason. Something she does well with her changeup, but wanted to change speeds even more. Try to get that fifth and sixth and seventh speed. Top of the order, it's Sammy Reynolds. He sounded like a transmission. <laughs> <laughs> Series. She'll be in that mid-60 range in that drop and change up Amanda that you spoke about. It's really her go-to. She's been focusing on all the abilities to mix speeds, mix spots within the zone. Two one. You know, she had an older sister who was a pitcher. And so from the time that she started walking, Shelby said last year at Super Regionals uh, that she just watched her and wanted to be like her. She just picked it up because she had an older sister who was doing it. It was a good decision. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, that paid off, huh? And you know, she's known for her ability to hit the ball too. And she said, you know, when she was getting recruited, that was the first question that she asked of every visit. Can I hit? You know, many coaches won't let yeah. you do both, but yeah. Coach Trina was willing to give her that shot. Out to right. Rodity's got it. Two down. And here comes Bailey Klingler. Good Let's showdown right here between she and Sunsiri. One 
one for three, that one being the three run home run in the second. Her third of the day in their two games. That load in her bottom half, Michelle, and just unleashed on that pitch. What a day for her. Three home runs in one day. It's <laughs> a nice little Friday right there. <laughs> it is. You know, when you're an athlete, you always, if you're struggling a little bit or you want to feel good, you just, you always pick those days you go back to. I think this might be one of hers. Yeah. yeah. Like, remember that day <laughs> in Clearwater? <laughs> Well, and Washington's picking up their frequent flyer miles, too, going from Washington down to Mexico and then back to Washington and then here to Florida. I mean, they're covering North America. That's right. Well, life in the, the Pacific Northwest, it, most years, they, they don't have but 10 or 15 home games. On the importance of pay, playing that really good competition early. The, the RPI matters, the committee's looking at how you schedule. Because then next weekend, they'll go to Palm Springs. And the weekend after that, they're on the road again to Las Vegas. Yeah. They're covering yeah. multiple different states. Dribbler off the end of the bat, and she'll be there. Two out base runner for the Huskies. Sincere getting off the mound quickly, and the throw down, I think that probably should have been caught. I think Georgia Clark is probably upset with herself. They're going to give that an E3. are going to go to the bench here. Um, no. There's Olivia Johnson. You know, I was, Olivia it shocked Johnson. me when Heather Tarr said that Bailey Klingler is actually the third fastest person on the team. Mm -hmm. She's gotten stronger and yeah. faster since she's been at Washington. Johnson singled. In the fourth, her pinch runner Alchin scored. On the RBI triple from Madison Husky. Sansuri keeps working in on her hands. the corner all day that's been a little stingy. A lot of the pitchers have been trying to, to keep throwing there, thinking eventually <laughs> the strike will show up. Well, I'm, I'm just putting two and two together, Beth. We talked about Auburn and their freshman, Bree Ellis, who's hit so many home runs already. I think four. Her and Olivia Johnson played on the same travel team in Pack Gold. So these two home run hitters yeah. that are making a splash were on the exact same travel team last year. Strike three or two. That's a nice pitch, 53 miles an hour, slightly elevated. If she can dump that down at the knees instead of at the waist. I think that pitch disappears under a lot of bats this year. Ball four. And to think, Michelle, again, going back to the tight strike zone, to think that there was a, a call in that at bat that could have gone either way, and pitcher not getting the call, ends up walking, inning extended. Madison Husky.
one and two. Second, Olivia Johnson at first. And right to Pleasance at short side, retired. Nine four, you dub on top. Well, we'll be doing our thing Sunday night, 7 Eastern on ESPN Primetime from St. Pete Zero Clearwater three. Elite Invitational, presented by Wilson with Florida State and UCLA. Game will be on ESPN. We'll move to the bottom of the sixth. Washington with the 9-4 lead over LSU. Sierra Briggs, it's 2-3-4. LSU has stranded nine base runners tonight. They've had multiple opportunities to work their way back into this thing. They've got a couple more at-bats to work with here. may be the time with the heart of the order coming up. Strike on the corner, three and one. It's interesting, that, you know, now granted I played ages ago, but typically, it was a game where the top of the lineup had three at-bats and maybe the bottom of the lineup may have only had two at-bats. You look at your scorecard nowadays, the majority of the, the batters, they're having four and five at-bats yeah. in a seven-inning game. Just fourth time here for Briggs. Drop down the bunt. Good coverage by Klingler to get her. 
One down. Next batter for the Tigers, number 17, Taylor Pleasant. One more chance for Pleasance. 0 for 2, hit by a pitch. She was 0 for 4 in the Oklahoma State game this afternoon. In her second at bat, she drove that ball deep to the fence and trying to see if she has some momentum. But to me, that right there tells you what she's struggling with. She's not identifying the pitch. So that changeup, she was completely fooled on it. Sometimes as a hitter, Michelle, then you, you just start to guess or tell yeah. yourself, you know what, I'm going to go up there, I'm going to swing at the first pitch no matter what. And that's how you can really tell when Lynch threw that change up that she had that mentality. And, and that's the ironic part of hitting fast pitch softball. You have to wait. You have to let the ball approach you. And Pleasance finally breaks through and gets the base hit. There she goes. Next batter for the Tigers, number it's a, 27. A rise ball and a little bit more out over the play. Actually, gets the top of it. Third hit of the season. There's the smile. Here comes Sunsiri, followed by Clark. Educated, Jess. Two and up. It's crazy to think at one point we had four games at one time mm -hmm. going on today, and now it's just us. <laughs> <laughs> the field by ourselves. <laughs> this was also a 9-1 game, and it was almost over in the fifth inning. And LSU has just been hanging around, and now they've got two on for Georgia Clark. Next batter for the Tigers, number 25, Georgia Clark. No activity in the Washington bullpen. It's because their other pitcher who was pitching is in center field. Is in center field. <laughs> and the other pitcher that was pitching is at first base. Yeah, at first base, exactly. And who started again? Uh, it Pat was Moore, so Pat long Moore. ago. Pat Moore is, uh, yeah. So this is Kennedy Hushmanzada who will come on to run for Sun Siri. This has been the field for three run home runs and pitching changes. Remember, it started today yes. with Northwestern and Texas Tech. They had eight pitching changes. Mm -hmm. And then how many have we had? Nine? Eight? I think we've had eight. eight. Okay. Yeah. Let's 
Sunsiri, of course, can re-enter. And in all likelihood would be pitching in the seventh. Question is, what would the score be at that point? Mm -hmm. Clark singled, scored in the fifth. Georgia hit three home runs for LSU last weekend. Lynch brings it in for a strike, one and one. Here's the 2 1 pitch. High drive back to the track at the base of the wall, and it's caught by Reynolds. Runners will tag. Just barely stayed in the house. Sammy Reynolds has been tested so much in this game. She's been diving forward, she's been going back, ball has been hit over her head. Now she's all the way at the wall. Just continuing to get challenged to cover a lot of the ground out there in left field, but she finds the warning track, has her hand out. But it's her back, actually, that hits the wall before her hand does and just falls into it. But able to secure a catch. I thought that was barely going to get out of here. Yeah, very close. Savannah Stewart with a couple in scoring position. And it's cooled down and the, the air is a little heavy. It makes you wonder if it had been earlier in the day, would that have left the yard? Yeah. That swing and then the pleasant swing mm -hmm. that just, they had some on it, but just not enough. Just under it. Stewart to second. They'll get the out at first. Side retired. Couple stranded. That's been the story for LSU. The lobs tonight. Oh, Sammy Reynolds with a nice catch up against the fence out in left. Doing it with her glove today, swinging a good bat today, and apparently uh, fighting with a bat today. <laughs> All in a day's work for Sammy. <laughs> oh, there's a great shot. The glow off the moon. As we head to the seventh and a 9-4 Washington lead over LSU. Huskies, Bailey Klingler with a three-run home run. Sammy Reynolds with a two-run home run. 
Husky and Brooke Nelson with good swings. They are looking to cap off a productive day against the Southeastern Conference. They uh, are already the proud owners of an 11-0 run rule win over Tennessee this afternoon. They already have uh, the two wins from last week over Arkansas. Looking to get to 4-0 against the Southeastern Conference. Out the center, one down. I'd love to have seen, you know, a healthy Ashley Rogers pitch against them and Ali Kilponen get the start against them instead of Oklahoma State. Shelby Sinceri get the start against them. You know, we're facing one of the aces. They just have them. Next Had to face that today. Ashley Rogers unavailable for the rest of the weekend. And then Kilponen pitched that run roll win earlier today. There's Sarah Willis 0 for 3. Couple of strikeouts and that hard liner out to center. You know, one thing I think to follow Beth and Michelle is, and the teams that don't have that co ace or 1A and 1B, a team like Washington or a team like UCLA or just other teams out there that we're not talking about quite yet. Who, I can't wait to see the pitcher that does step up who becomes the co-ace, who actually grabs a bull by the horns and, and takes that role instead of just leaning on the pitch by committee. Like, who's going to be that, that next impact pitcher to do that? I'm sure every coach is uh, thinking the same yeah, thing. Yeah, wondering <laughs> the same yeah. thing. Be me, be me. Oh, and Sarah Willis, I mean, she's one that's potentially capable of it. Yeah. She was warming up earlier in the game. There's mm -hmm. the one-two pitch. Chop to third. Coffee, two down. Next up for the Huskies, number 19, Jen Cummings. Jen Cummings, 0 for 2, hit by a pitch. Huskies got six in the second and three more in the fourth. Goes the other way with it and drifting foul. Getting the uni dirty. a shot towards the gap. All the way back to the base of the wall for Jen Cummings in the stand-up double. Cummings is just gonna take advantage of a changeup that's elevated. Doesn't get down in the zone, waits on it, barrels it up. they are going oppo foul. Changeup up. And that's a good pitch for Shelby Sanceri. She just needs to locate it lower. We've seen a couple of them up in the zone, and that one, Washington climbs all over, Cummings bashes it to the wall. Yeah, yeah. 
Megan Vandegrift is the pinch runner out at second. And here's Brooke Nelson. RBI double back in that second inning. Shallow center and diving grab out on the grass made by Peterson. Saved a run there. To the bottom of the seventh we go. The last chance for LSU. Oh, a quick pan of the old scoreboard. Washington with that big six run second inning. They lead it nine to four and they are three outs away from a win. Last chance here for LSU to get something going. The ninth pitching change of the game for the two sides as uh, Sarah Willis will come on to hurl. Next thing you know, Michelle and I are going to be down there. Yes. All these pitching changes. Let's see, Lynch moves to first, Egan moves to center, and Husky moves to right. Oh, all, the, all the changes for those of you with your scorebooks at home. Seven, eight, and nine are due up. For Sarah Willis, fourth appearance in the circle, all in relief. She's thrown four and a third innings this season. Kenzie Rue today. Oh, Willis heating it up. Yeah, 68 miles an hour. She goes with good velocity, and then she has that, she has that good changeup. the season if you've given up any runs and don't have you've only thrown four innings your ERA is going to be <laughs> yeah, exactly. a little high I've seen some pretty inflated <laughs> ERAs this mm -hmm. weekend because not a lot of innings to work with two ones fouled off at 70 miles an hour right there Sarah Willis did Bringing some heat here in the seventh. Yeah, she brings some energy too. You can just mm -hmm. tell she, there's a different feel in the circle when she's in there. Nice 
Well, there are definitely options for Heather Char. It's just a matter of the consistency after Gabby playing. Who's that change up? Okay, so from 70 <laughs> to 44. 26 miles an hour difference. That is some good stuff right there. Buckle your knees, right? No cheating. <laughs> you get caught, right? Two two to Rudity. Count to McKenzie. Lost her. Sure, the conversation is strikes and outs. Strike, 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 Throw strike. strikes. Okay. Efficiency. We have a five run. Strikes and outs. Strikes and outs. Doesn't matter which out, just get an out. Normally we're like get the lead out, but this one just outs. Just and strikes. Right there. Side of the Tigers, number 84, Carrington Hushman Zada. Carrington Hushman Zada is the batter. show off for the crowd there. Some good acting. It's like pretending like, hey, look at this catch of it. Like, uh -huh. It's mm -hmm. the wrong mm -hmm. one. <laughs> the old switcheroo. <laughs> Knee buckling. You could see it. Man. Lip change, too. Oof. Those are almost not fair, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just floats in there. Mm -hmm. There's Peterson. Starting for the Tigers, number one, Sidney Peterson.
Base hit through the left side. Turns over the order now, too. Danica Coffey coming back up for her fifth at bat. Mm -hmm. Michelle, like you were talking about. Yeah. That's better for the Tigers, number 13, Danica Coffey. A strikeout, a walk, a single, and then a fly out to left for Coffey tonight. Tigers trying to pass the bat here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Need a five run rally or better. I think there was an illegal pitch. Illegal pitch yeah. called. It was called by the first base umpire too, so. Responds with a strike. It doesn't look to me like her foot comes close mm -mm. to off the her drag foot comes close to being in the air no, off the ground. Yeah, she slides a little bit. So the question was if maybe her foot was Sliding she stepped forward. forward. Yeah. One and two. Energy, good location. That's better for the Tigers, number 88, Sierra Briggs. All right, last chance now is Sierra Briggs. in for a strike. And she keeps that 68 on the knees on the outside corner. That's, that's tough to hit. Missed that one away, one away. to short and the short way to second for the final out. Nine to four the final Washington a winner over LSU. Join us tomorrow morning as we continue our coverage from the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational number three UCLA and number 25 Auburn at 10 30 Eastern on ESPNU. I'm Beth Bowens with Michelle Smith, Amanda Scarborough for our entire crew. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back